Folks, welcome to a very special interview ahead of Metal Wrestling's premiere episode on Saturday, April 9th. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing one of the top names in the sport today, a man who won the Royal Rumble and will challenge Jeff Hardy for the NLW Championship at WrestleMania 5. This is the Prince, Finn Balor. And Finn, my first question has to be, why did you sign with Metal Wrestling over NLW? A number of reasons, first of all, contractually Stone Cold brought me a better offer to the table. Not necessarily financially, you know, Triple H, he gave me a very good offer, more money than Metal, but if it was all about the money, the best decision I could have made would have been easy. Ultimately, I needed to assess where I'd fit in best, where I'd be valued the most as a fighter, and where ultimately I'd have the opportunity to test myself week in, week out against the best there is in the business, and... By re-signing with Metal, I think this is the best place to do that. And you're going to make history at WrestleMania. You will be the first non-NLW contracted performer to compete for the NLW Championship on an NLW pay-per-view. In fact, you could take the NLW title away from NLW and to Metal Wrestling. And, you know, how would that feel? Uh, it would validate what I've been fighting for for nearly 20 years to be recognized as the best in the business. And as I said, it's not about the money, it's about the competition. And it is a stacked roster on metal that you'll be mixing up with. Um, talk about who you like to fight. That's what I think is the beautiful thing about metal wrestling is that all these guys there are so different. I'm coming back in hot. There's the likes of CM Punk, the young guys like Darby Allen and Jonah all completely different individuals, and then there's guys I've got unfinished business with, like the Bruce Waite, Pete Dunne. I think, you know, with anything, uh, with Pete, we probably bear the most similarities to each other compared to all of the opponents on that roster. He's someone who's definitely been on the rise in the last couple of years, and I'm well aware of his abilities inside the ring. For me, it's going to pose a big challenge to fight him again, even though I haven't forgotten losing to him last time. If we fight again... It will not be the same result, and I've also got a lot of history with the likes of, uh, you know, Seth Rollins, the Intercontinental Champion, and that'll be a title I'd be interested in going after once, you know, I win the NLW title at WrestleMania. Of course, in those days when you're on medal competing regularly on the brand, since your contract expired, we've seen you make some more unannounced appearances on NLW. Was that maybe to get a feeling out of the show, perhaps scouting to see if NLW could have been a good fit for you? Uh, you know, when I started uh, appearing in the front row or showing up at NLW events, it, it wasn't to see if it was a good fit. It was to scout one man, and that's the NLW champion, Jeff Hardy. I always knew I'd be challenging him if I won the Royal Rumble, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, how does winning the Royal Rumble rank up there in terms of your career achievements? It's up there, but it will pale in comparison to when I take the NLW title from Jeff Hardy at WrestleMania. Um, you know, Jeff Hardy, he's a tough opponent. He's been in the Ministry of Darkness for a number of months now, and, you know, talk about the Ministry. Of course, they've made a point about taking control and causing destruction and chaos, and does the fact that, I don't know, so many of them are now focused on you at all concerning? Only in the sense that they could try and screw me over. I'm not afraid of The Undertaker, Jeff Hardy, or whoever this so-called higher power is. Mind games are irrelevant to me. I want that NLW title, and that's my goal. Uh, you know, when I hear you speak, you have a lot more confidence than I remember when I met you several years ago, and you seem to have a chip on your shoulder, and, you know, we've seen a lot of changes in you over your NLW and metal career. What are the main differences between yourself from your debut in 2015 and now? In 2015... I was too eager to please. Right now, I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say or what people want from me. I just want to do what I want to do. I think the real difference in the point uh, where I'm at now is that my career here than in 2015, back then, I needed NLW. I needed the limelight and I needed to prove myself on the biggest stage. I feel right now, in 2022, I don't need NLW. I don't need metal wrestling. You see both companies waiting on me, hand and foot, to sign me to a contract because they know I'm the real deal. I was too much of a people pleaser before, and yeah, maybe in the last couple of years I may have strayed too much in the other direction. I felt like I needed to get away from that. I needed to have a gang around me, the Bala Club, 
doing my dirty work. But once I kicked them to the curb and started doing my own thing, that's the real toughness, not hanging around with a group of guys for protection. And I found that out the hard way. It's why when I see guys like Jeff Hardy coast along with his merry gang of Satanists keeping him safe, it pisses me off. When I see the Undisputed Era use the numbers advantage, it pisses me off. That's why I rejected Adam Cole's offer and kicked his head off, because I don't need them. They need me. It's as simple as that. Uh, talk about that moment. Was there ever a point you considered accepting Adam Cole's offer to join the Undisputed Era? I always knew I was going to reject them. I was just waiting for the right moment. You know, I don't like what they've done, as I've said. I did the same thing, and it made me weak. On my own, I've got a new screw-the-world attitude. I can't trust anyone, and you can't trust me. And that's the way I like it. I will do a lot to become champion, but selling out isn't something I'm going to do now. I could have taken Triple H's money and sign with NLW, join the Undisputed Era, and become NLW champion, but what would that prove? This is my fight to win, and with respect, no one in NLW or Metal is going to stop me. Say you accomplish that goal, you win the NLW title, what happens next for the Prince? Well, I can't afford to think too far ahead. Everything can change in an instant. The initial thought process I have is see how things work out. And it might be three months, it might be six months, there's no real plan when I'm champion. I can't see anyone beating me though. I beat 29 men to win the Royal Rumble, what's 29 more? And I know there's been discussions back and forth a couple of times about whether I should go back to Japan, take a break or whatever. But for me, I'm very happy where I am and I'm willing to give my blood, sweat and tears in metal wrestling as long as there's someone with a head to stomp in. Nothing's ever been concrete with me, and nothing's ever concrete in this business, and there's been no set time frame on anything for me. I'm just set on pushing harder, making my mark, and putting metal wrestling on the map, and when I become NLW champion, that will be the coup de grace for me. Well, you've had a very long career, as you said, but never a match of this magnitude coming at WrestleMania for the NLW championship against Jeff Hardy. How have your experiences in wrestling prepared you for this match. Working in Japan, working in Europe non-stop. I think one year I chalked up 172 matches in different cities all around the world. Just having that consistency has become second nature. You know, you can wake up and be in a wrestling match and not be phased at all. I feel I've become a lot more consistent. I've become a lot more comfortable when I'm in that ring. Definitely the sheer amount of volume of matches that I've competed in has helped me on every level, but really, just with confidence in myself that I know exactly what I'm doing at all times. I've been tortured, beaten, bloodied before. The Ministry thinks they can beat me like they've done to everyone who stepped in their way. Well, those hardships are part of my story. It's made me a stronger person, and I'm not resentful for that at all. So bring it, because the 14-year-old kid from Ireland with a dream to become world champion, he's gone. Now, I'm a rugged, middle-aged, focused machine. And that title dream now is an inevitability. To reach the top of the mountain every time I got there before it got taken away from me early. Whatever. It happens. Exactly the way it was supposed to happen for me. I learned a lot from it. And maybe I would have been in a lot worse position now had I had that run people feel I was robbed of. Now I'm back to do some serious damage. Jeff Hardy likes to take risks. I live for that. But the biggest risk Jeff Hardy's going to take is relying on the Ministry to stop the Prince from beating him to a pulp and taking his NLW Championship. And my last question, why do you believe you will walk out of WrestleMania as NLW Champion? Because now, I'm doing this for me. I'm performing for myself. I don't care if I have the weight of the world on my shoulders, which I may have had when I first came here. That might have been too much pressure, too much stress, or too much for me to fully comprehend. Right now, there is no pressure because I don't need it. I want it. I'm doing this not to prove to anyone else, but to prove to myself that this is where I belong. And at WrestleMania, Jeff Hardy will find that out firsthand when I stomp his head in and become NLW champion.